All right, so we're going to look at uh, two types of mass. First is the inertial mass, and the inertial mass is the mass um, that we use in Newton's second law. It's the mass that um, follows or obeys Newton's second law. Um, the gravitational mass is the mass um, that experiences the value of the mass that experiences gravity. Now, it so happens that these two masses um, are equal to each other. And we'll get into that a little later on as well. Um, so inertia and rotational inertia. Linearly, an object with more inertia is harder to accelerate than an object with less inertia. So it's another way of saying an object with more mass is harder to accelerate than an object with less mass. Um, so we can say in linear motion, inertia is equivalent to mass. Uh, rotational systems have rotational inertia. And rotationally, an object with more inertia is harder to accelerate rotationally. So that's alpha, the rotational um, acceleration. It's harder to accelerate rotationally than an object with less inertia. The equation that we use for a system of particles, you notice I'll use objects as well, but uh, for a system of particles is this. You add up all the particles, um, you multiply each one times its radius and um, squared, and that's how you get what we call its rotational inertia. Okay, and the units for it is kilogram times meters squared, or ki just kilogram meters squared. M is the mass, and R is the radius of the rotation. Um, so all objects we'll talk about here in a little bit. All right, so let's look at this problem. We're going to rotate this 2-kilogram mass and this 3-kilogram mass um, about the center. So this rod here has no mass to it. The only mass is this 2-kilogram and this 3-kilogram mass. So it's important to note that these we're going to treat these as point particles. All right, so we're going to find the rotational inertia if we try to spin it around the middle here. Let's do that first. Okay, so there's our equation. We're going to take each object, multiply it times its radius, and then <clears throat> do the same with the other objects and add them together. So M1, let's call this M1, and let's call that M2. So for M1, M1 is 2 kilograms away from our rotational axis. I'm sorry. Our M1 is 2 kilograms. It's 1 meter away from our rotational axis. M2 is 3 kilograms, and it's also 1 meter away from our rotational axis. So in this equation, we include, oops, uh, let me get rid of that. Um, yes. Okay. Um, so in this equation, there's basically going to be 1 mass, there's going to be uh, one expression for every mass. There's, in other words, there's going to be one mr squared for every mass. So we've got two masses here, so we've got two mr squareds. Okay? And then we just do the math, and we find that the rotational inertia about the center here is 5 kilogram meters squared. All right. Now we're going to rotate it about this end here. All right. So it's the same equation. We still have two masses. So we're going to need two of these expressions, m1, r1 squared, m2, r2 squared. But now notice that the distance this object is away from the um, rotational axis is zero meters. So that makes this entire expression here zero. This mass, three kilograms, is now two meters away from the rotational axis. In this case, we get 12 kilogram meters per second squared. All right, so rotational inertia calculations. Again, this is the equation we just looked at for a system of particles, solid objects. We're going to check that out here in a second. Um, and then we're going to also use this equation called the parallel axis theorem here in a second. Um, now, you don't need to have any of these memorized. These are all of the equations for the center of mass for these different objects. All right. Well, actually, no, the, um, they're not all for the center of mass. 
They're all the center of the mass except for this one where it's spinning around the end of the rod. Okay? You don't have to have these memorized, but it's a good idea to have this sheet around. Eventually, you'll have them memorized anyway because we'll be using them so often. All right. Um, let's find the rotational inertia of this solid cylinder. All right? So we got to go back and look at the equation for a solid cylinder or disk. It's 1 half mr squared. Okay? So 1 half mr squared is our equation. We're going to spin it about its center of mass. That means right in the middle. The mass is 6 kilograms. R is its radius. Okay, so 6 kilograms, 1 half times 6 kilograms times 0.3 squared. That gives us 0.81 kilogram meter squared. And that's it. We'll talk about the parallel axis theorem in class.